The most impressive results we had in this study was actually in the nursery phase. After winning, like the first four days of the nursery phase, we evaluate the animals about how much time they spend until they start to eating the, the, the food. And the animals that were classified as eaters in the pre-winning phase, they start to, to eat like 250% more faster than the animals that were, weren't classified as eaters. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Fernanda Santos, a master's student at the University of Sao Paulo. So Fernanda, before we begin, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Hi, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Fernanda. I'm a veterinarian. I just graduated last year in the University of Sao Paulo. And today I'm a master's student also in the University of Sao Paulo here in Brazil. I'm part of the Swine Research Laboratory Group. We're coordinated by Professor Garbosa. And we have a lot of different lines of research like reproduction, nutrition, welfare, but my lines of research are mostly nutrition. It's some of economic analysis, economic index, cost of production, also everything related to swine industry, especially here in Sao Paulo. So I see some of your undergraduate research uh, that you did was done on creep feeding and some of its effects throughout the nursery period. So you could you just go ahead and tell me a little bit about that study? Yeah, I was saying uh, I have the two lines of research I've been working on. There was nutrition and economics. And the idea for this study was to get together both of them. So we wanted to evaluate the economic effects of group feeding and, of course, uh, the performance of the piglets as well. So uh, we used 125 piglets. All of them were exposed to group feeding. And the first thing we did it for was to evaluate how many animals that actually ate the group feeding. And the number of animals we found were actually lower than we expected. Only like a quarter of the, the animals actually ate the creep. But we have a lot of things that can influence that, like the form of the creep feeding and the, how much time the animals are exposed to the creep. In our study, it was only for 14 days. I found in other studies uh, more time. But the goal of the study was to approximate like how things are done in a commercial farms, you know. So besides that, we didn't find any difference in performance of the piglets when we talk about pre-wing phase. But the most impressive results we had in this study was actually in the nursery phase. I mean, uh, after winning, like the first four days of the nursery phase, we evaluate the animals about how much time they spend until they start to eating the, the, the food. And the animals that were classified as eaters in the pre-winning phase, they start to, to eat like 250% more faster than the animals that were, weren't classified as eaters. So for me, this is one of the most impressive results we have because we know how fast can be harmful for the piglets after raining. We already have like social problems and immunity problems, nutritional problems related to winning. And when we can do something to reduce these problems, I think it's very, very helpful. And besides that, we also have... Uh, great results when you talk about performance. So piglets that were considered eaters in the pre winning phase, they eat more in the nursery phase and they also have a better weight gain. So with that, we can assure the, the better economic results we had. But something is important to, to talk about this economic analysis is that we create a scenario that evaluates the nursery phase 
and just a nursery phase. And why? Because it's the first study we, we had involving these two variables. We first wanted to evaluate this phase itself because we considered it was the most important phase when you talk about crib feeding. Not the pre-winning one, but yes, the, the nursery phase. So first, our scenario is that is a producer that buys piglets after weaning, creates the piglets until sell them to growing and finished phases. So this is our economic scenario. Our future objective is to expand this economic scenario to all phases to assure the economic viability of crib feeding. So with this analysis, um, you were talking earlier before we started about how you did some sort of, um, well, an economic analysis on it and kind of looked at the benefits that you can get from creep feeding. So what did you guys see in terms of economic benefit? Yeah, in our study, we actually evaluated a scenario of the nursery phase. So we can, I mean, we are talking about a producer that buys piglets from the after weaning. So the cost of production of the crib feeding itself is not on the producer of the nursery phase. So the scenario is this, we buy a piglet, uh, since the piglets didn't have any performance difference, the piglets all cost the same. And for the producer that are raising them in the nursery phase, the piglets day, the crib feeding had a better performance. So they sell these piglets with a higher price and have a better profit. And of course, for a better analysis, we, we should evaluate the whole stages. But when you talk about the economic analysis and how to relate it to nutritional variables and stuff, we need to start little <laughs> and then start to evaluate the whole scenario because economic, we have a lot of variables we can consider. But the scenario we created for this study we can assure that animals that ate group feeding, they generate a better profit for for the producers. Gotcha. So I was also interested on kind of your classification between the two groups with the eaters and the non-eaters, because like you said, you um, provided creep feed to all these pigs and then identified those that ate feed and those that didn't eat feed and then separated them out and kind of tracked their growth throughout the nursery period though. So this, this shows that the pigs that chose to eat creep feed had a better start, but just obviously making the creep feed available doesn't necessarily mean they're going to eat it. So what other factors do you think could encourage the pigs to eat the creep feed? Yeah, I actually did a lot of research on that. How I said it was kind of disappointing when we had the results because the numbers of Piglet's day, the creep was actually pretty low. And when I was researching about that, we we see that a lot of factors that can affect this consumption, like the form of the creep feeding. Uh, here in Brazil, we have a lot of food that suffered like in grain. It's not pellet, you know. And uh, we know that for piglets, this is not very good. Actually, we it was better if you can form you can provide always food in pellets, but other forms like also the position of the creeper inside the crate. Uh, I wrote, I study that if the, cre- the, the creep is inserted next to the f- female's head, the piglet tends to eat more if it's positioned like in the back of the crate. And we have a lot of uh, different variables. In our study, the the piglets they were exposed only 14 days because we we winned the animals with 21 days. But we know here in Brazil and all over, I believe, uh, producers are starting to win piglets a little later, like 25 days, 28 days. So this could help too, because we know animals with more more age, they have better good development, they start to eat more. And also the soil will start to have a decrease in the milk production. So piglets are going to start to look for other resources. So I believe we have other strategies that we can apply. So we know crib feeding is good. So how can we when we make all piglets start to eat it, right? Giga Technologies manufactures just all swine precision feeding systems designed by a family of pork producers for pork producers. 
The Gestol feeders are a simple, durable, and reliable solution, trusted by industry experts for all production stages. For 30 years now, Giga Technologies has been at the forefront of innovation, continuously enhancing sow nutrition and delivering remarkable outcomes for producers. Contact Giga Technologies specialists to learn more. So as you've now made that transition from this being your undergraduate research to working on your master's, um, have you kind of continued down that same line of research or have you kind of shifted gears a little bit? So what, what exactly are you working on now then? Actually, no, it's like totally different. <laughs> and now in my master's, I'm working with growing and finishing pigs. I'm studying relations between vitamin D and different calcium to phosphorus radios. And this is like a, I changed it a little bit, my line of uh, research. During my undergraduate, I was still discovering, you know, what I like to study. And at the final, when my final stage of graduation, I have a lot of contact with finisher producers. And I, I like a lot this line of uh, research. So that's what I chose to study in my master's. And I just finished actually my experimental period. So I'm working on my results now. And I hope it's something good soon. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you, Fernanda, for coming on the show and sharing all your research with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.